by Chevrolet and your Chevy dealers who want to help get America rolling right now. By Dial It National Sports. For the latest scores, updates on sports news, and interviews with sports headliners, dial 900-976-1313. By Michelob Light, an exceptional light beer with a rich, smooth taste. And by General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. the Mid-East Regional second round play. We had a fabulous first game, a most remarkable first game, as St. Joseph's of Philadelphia continues the legendary upsets of tournament play, scoring at the final buzzer to beat the number one ranked team in the country, the DePaul Blue Demons, 49 to 48. The score is still on the board, and still people are looking at it in disbelief. I'm Don Quickie with Gary Thompson. We're ready now for the second game, which will be between two real good clubs, stocked with top talent. Maryland and Indiana, both 21-9, Gary. Well, it's going to be the same kind of game, I think, as we saw in the first one. Temple will determine who wins the ball game. Well, St. Joseph's took the air out of the ball, played the kind of game they wanted, kept the score in the 40s. They were hoping to keep it in the 60s. Indiana's a team that's aggressive. They attack. They come into this game having won their last five Big Ten games in a row. And we'll be back with this game after we go to our studios for this message. <laughs> And we're back and almost ready for Maryland versus Indiana. The Hoosiers coming to the game ranked number seven in the country with five consecutive Big Ten wins coming into this game. The Maryland players are openly optimistic they can take it the distance and go to the Final Four and maybe win it all. Maryland with a 21-9 record lost its last game, you remember, in the ACC tournament in North Carolina by one point. But prior to that, Maryland blasted previously top-ranked Virginia by 23. They think that's the kind of basketball they can play. We're going to find out right now as we go over for the public address introduction of the starting lineups. Charlie Robinson is standing by there. I'm Don Quickie with Gary Thompson. And Gary, this looks like it's going to be a good one. It's got the crowd at speed already. They haven't sat down since the last one. Well, they haven't. They're still in shock over that last one as DePaul gets beat by one. But these are two quality teams. And I mentioned tempo again. Indiana will slow it down. Maryland's an up-tempo team that likes to run. Now let's go over and meet the starting lineups as we go to the public address announcer, Charlie Robinson. Charlie? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for today's game. First, from the University of Maryland Terrapin, number 55, a forward and six foot six senior from Brooklyn, New York, Albert King. From the Indiana University Hoosiers, number 32, a forward and 6'10 junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, Landon Turner. From the Terrapin, number 25, a forward and 6'7 senior from Baltimore, Maryland, Ernest Graham. From the Hoosiers, number 30, a forward and 6'8 junior from Galveston, Indiana, Ted Kitchell. From the Terrapin, number 52, a center and 6'8 junior from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, Buck Williams. From the Hoosiers, number 45, in the center and 6'9 senior from Anderson, Indiana, Ray Colbert. From the Terrapin, number 15, a guard and 6'4 junior from Philadelphia, Reggie Jackson. From the Hoosiers, number 24, a guard and six foot six junior from Indianapolis, Randy Whitman. From the Terrapin, number 10, a guard and six foot one senior from High Spire, Pennsylvania, Greg Manning. From the Hoosiers, number 11, and a guard, six foot one sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, Isaiah Thomas. Coaching the University of Maryland Terrapins, Charles Leslie Gazelle. And coaching the Indiana University Hoosiers, Bobby Knight. So we're just about set to go. It's been great so far. This one should be every bit as good as Indiana and Maryland are ready to go in the second round game. And we'll be back at the University of Dayton Arena right after we switch away. Don Crickey with Gary Thompson back at courtside. University of Dayton Arena, Maryland, coming out in flaming yellow uniforms with the red numerals. They're lucky uniforms, Leslie says. 
Well, we'll find out. Ball is tipped in backcourt to Maryland's Reggie Jackson. Up court he goes to Ernest Graham. Maryland on the attack now down. Lona Buck Williams in the first points of the game are up very quickly. Maryland's Buck Williams puts up the first shot, and the Terrapins lead 2 0. Gary, are you ready for another one of these? Can you handle it, Frank? <laughs> well, it's great basketball. It's a great time with the NCAA basketball championship. If you weren't with us for the first game, you we saw St. Joseph's of Philadelphia on a shot at the final buzzer. Beat number one ranked to Paul 49-48. Here's Albert King coming down the floor. Greg Manning got the ball up to him. And Albert King hits the field goal. And Maryland opens up a four-point lead. And Albert had a hot night uh, the other night. As they won, he had 25 points, 11 to 20 from the field. Outside, Indiana goes to Isaiah Thomas. Ray Tolbert, Landon Turner, Randy Whitman, and there's Ted Kitchell shooting, and the rebound again is down to Maryland. Here comes Ernest Graham. Terrapins are ready to go. Look at him come down the floor. Ernest Graham feeds up, and Buck Williams puts it up and good. And no foul. Bobby Knight is up. And you saw that pass by Ernie Graham, 6-7. But he leads this ball club in a set. Damn, Maryland's in here coming out like a freight train. Landon Turner putting a move on Ernest Graham. Turner puts it up off the glass. And again, Buck Williams tips the way. By the way, here comes Ernest Graham behind the back at 6-8. Lead pass goes down low. And Albert King puts up a shot. But this time, the Terrapins miss for the first time in the game. Now, Indiana comes down the floor. Isaiah Thomas, their All-American guard, gets the ball to Randy Whitman. He puts it up. And again, Indiana can't get it to go, and the ball is back to Maryland. This game is like a track meet. They haven't slowed up for a moment. No, and uh, Indiana's getting their shots. He's expected to be more patient, and Maryland free and easy as Graham knocks it down. Maryland has come out, and under lefty, Drizel has opened up an eight-point lead. Drizel, and like a lot of coaches, when the criticism comes, is talking about People calling him a bad coach, a good recruiter and a bad coach. He said, you don't win 420 games as in careers he's done without knowing something about coaching, and that's very true. And Bobby Knight, who's won over 73% of his games as coach at Indiana, sees his team get its first basket. And basket by Landon Turner, who has really played strong the last six ball games. Offensive foul there on Ernie Graham. Indiana comes into the game on a roll. The Hoosiers won their last five Big Ten games. And as you know, that victory over Michigan State, as all Indiana fans know, brought the Hoosiers another Big Ten championship. They beat out Iowa. And that last foul was on Buck Williams rather than Graham. It's 8-2 to two this game. Maryland and Yellow is in the lead. Now Ted Kitchell, an unheralded player who adds greatly to the Indiana team game, hits the jump shot to make it 8-4. to four. It was 8 nothing Maryland. Reggie Jackson is from Philadelphia. That sounds has to be in celebration after what the St. Joe team did upsetting DePaul. Reggie Jackson gets the ball down low to Ernest Graham, and it's going to come back the other way. So Indiana, off a little bit slower to Maryland's firehouse game, now gets right back in it. Well, they're a good defensive ball club. They led the Big Ten in defense. Uh, a defensive average of 59.8 points per ball game. So it's a tough club to score. But Landon Turner of the Indiana Hoosiers, the junior forward from Indianapolis Tech High School, is called for a travel, and the ball comes back over to Maryland. Coach Knight up and about in good form, and his 10th year as head coach of Indiana. Youngest coach ever to win 200 games, youngest coach ever to win 300. With a big Buck Williams there, a second foul. And I think he got called for hooking. If he got the pass in on the pole, he's going to hook and make the move to the baseline. And that's his second foul, should be. Bobby Knight, as we mentioned in his 10th year, is counterpart Lefty Drizel in his 12th year at Maryland. And tonight, the youngest coach at age 39 to win 300 ball games. He's going to win a lot more, too, or as Hoosiers <laughs> are. He said it's the players that win them. He has little to do with it, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Isaiah Thomas to the basket. Look at that guy play. Isn't that something? That's an All-American play. Chicago player, Isaiah Thomas, who Bobby Knight called the greatest player I've ever recruited to Indiana. Thomas responded by delivering a season this year that he was voted consensus All-American. He made every All-America first team. The sophomore. He's called for a foul here. 
Well, there's no way that he's going to get up with Albert King and sky and block his shot. Albert himself can get off the floor pretty good. The only people that aren't drained emotionally here are the two teams that are playing right now. Their coaches, they were in their locker room. They did not see the ending of the St. Joseph's game when underdog St. Joe's scored at the final buzzer for a one-point win over the number one team in America, DePaul, 49-48. And this place just went bonkers. And I don't think everybody's back to normal yet. It was such an unbelievable emotional impact. Albert King, who last year was a first-team All-American, the best player in the Atlantic Coast Conference. They say he had an off-season this year, but his coach disagrees. He said he's done more of the things that we want him to do. Didn't score 25 a game like a year ago, but he did score almost 18, and Albert King is a great player. Right now, Maryland's lead is 9-6. Isaiah Thomas, right to the basket again, pulls up and hits another one. Up court, Ernest Graham gets the long lead pass for Maryland. Ernest Graham did not have the good game against North Carolina. They think that was the big difference in Carolina, uh, that ACC final in the tournament play. Now, six points are on the board for Buck Williams. He's come out of flying. Buck only had two in the first half against Carolina. 11 to 8, three point lead for Maryland. Isaiah Thomas looping it down to the corner, and Randy Whitman takes his time, does not get the shot. Nervous Graham has played a big game, takes it off the boards, and goes the distance. End to end, down low to Albert King. Look at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We'll watch Albert King again. Here we come right down here. You'll see his pass behind the back. Albert King goes by him, switches the ball to the left hand. The foul had to be called out here, and I think it must have been a uh, charging foul. I believe, Gary, it was a dribbling violation of King. The turnover on that. Now the Hoosiers come right back down, strike again, and they're within one point. It's 11 to 10. Ted Kitzer with two field goals for Indiana. And that's a plus for Indiana because Kitzel's only been averaging 5.2 points if you come back from being injured. And he is a good offensive that's player. Ernest Graham. Ernest Graham gets the field goal. And it is now a 13-10 game. The Maryland Terrapins are in the lead. Ray Tobert, former Indiana High School Player of the Year. Bangs one, his second field goal. And the Hoosiers are back to within one. They were down 8 nothing. Boy, the intensity level of this game is something. They have just gone end-to-end end and really gotten after it. they got a long way to go. 14-26 left to play in the first half. And Maryland leads Indiana 13-12. We'll be back at Dayton after this. Early in this game, the Maryland Terrapins have come out, put the ball up eight times, and hit six for 75%. From the field, Indiana 6 of 11 for almost 55%. And Maryland, Maryland leads just one point. Maryland committing five turnovers, letting Indiana get back in the ball game. And Indiana showing their poise there. They were blowing out 8 to nothing. They'd had good shots. I think normally you'd have probably seen a coach or Bobby Knight call timeout if they'd been turning it over. But they had their shots, just not hitting. Ray Tolbert, who's really come on this season for Indiana. Bobby Knight says he is odds on, in his opinion, to be Big Ten Player of the Year. Hits the jump shot. And it's 14-13, Indiana rallies back to take the lead. Reggie Jackson loses the handle. So Maryland, after coming out and hitting everything in sight and going up 8-0, now sees the lead swing over to Indiana, 14-13. Isaiah Thomas gets the ball out to Randy Whitman. Landon Turner back to Whitman. He's such a consistent player. Whitman has turned the ball over only 33 times in 30 games this year. Tobert says, you want to give me the shot, fail? I'm going to knock it all day long. All right, he'll shoot it. He's 58% from the field, as you mentioned, has really come on strong in the conference, averaging 14, better than 14 points in Big Ten play. He was only averaging eight in non-conference play. Albert King, super talent out of Brooklyn. Senior player, Ernest Graham takes a look, fires the ball to the backcourt player, Greg Manning. Loose ball, here's the lead pass to Thomas. Watch this! Oh, beautiful ball handling. Fantastic play by the Hoosiers of Indiana. 
And they, from an eight-point deficit, have opened up a five-point lead with 13.03 left to play in the first half. The big red from Indiana have it going, and we'll be back in a moment. On Cricky with Gary Thompson back, and here you see the steal by Indiana. Whitman gets the ball up to Isaiah Thomas, who feeds off to Tolbert, who gets it all. Indiana didn't score until 17.45, remained in the first half. Look at that. Great, great replay. And you got a key right there is Ray Tolbert hustling down to get in position to get that return pass. Our producer today for NBC is David Stern. Our director, Kenny Faust, is we're at Dayton, Ohio. Indiana in the lead, 18 to 15 over Maryland. As the Terrapins come back down after opening up with what looked like it was going to be a blowout. And then they let Indiana get right back in it. Hoosiers had a lot to do with it. Is first. And Albert on the second. line, chance for a three pointer. Albert King, he's something. 6'6 six, six senior. 17.7 point a game score. Great shooter, over 50% from the field, over 80% from the line. Isaiah Thomas dancing inside with the ball. He's a strong player at 6'1. 185 pounds. Isaiah Thomas draws a foul. Greg Manning gets it. He knows how to play this Manning. High Spire, Pennsylvania. Four year started for Maryland, the second team All AC player. Great shooter. Last year he hit over 64%. This year Manning tailed off, only hit 56%. Still puts him on the nation's leaders. Whitman gets it all over. Here's Ted Kitchell. Back to Whitman. Maryland in the zone defense. Isaiah Thomas sees the shot and takes it. He's really something. Well, he's a good shooter in the motion offense, getting a, a pick down on the baseline, popping out. Looks like it could have been traveling. Albert King, who was called in the violation at the gate of the score earlier, almost called the travel, does not get the shot to go. Isaiah Thomas holds the ball, gets it out to Whitman. There's about as much college basketball talent out in this floor right now as you'll ever see in one game. More high school All-Americans than out there. Well, if all ten of them made one high school All-American team or another. Here's Whitman putting it up. Rebound tipped over. Landon Turner puts it back up. Didn't look like much, but it got the result. It went down. Mentioned Landon Turner started early in the year, started eight games, then was moved out of the lineup, and now it's come back the last five ball games to start, which Indiana won in that conference as they add Iowa for the Big Ten Championship. Ernest Graham takes the ball to the free throw line, pulls up, takes the shot, it rolls around, the rebound comes down to Isaiah Thomas, but the loose ball is finally picked up inside court, and Ernest Graham has the ball inside to Williams, feeding off to Albert King, and a foul is called on Indiana's Landon Turner. The big guys from Maryland pass that ball extremely well, can dump it off, they can find the open man. We mentioned Graham at 6'7", leads the club in assists, and Albert King is second in assists. And there he saw a fine pass by Buck Williams. Albert King brings the ball inbounds to Greg Nanny. Reggie Jackson against Isaiah Thomas. Albert King feeds it over, and Charles Pittman in the game hits it off the baseline of the floor, and Maryland now comes back to within four. Pittman, a junior college transfer from Mercer Junior College in California. Led that team to the Juco Junior College Championship. Ted Kitchell doing some good work. Puts it up and down, and now it is a 24-18 game Indiana. Great turn of events after Maryland took an 8-0 lead at the outset. Albert King, who has every move in the book, every shot in the book. Just a super talent. Reggie Jackson on the outside. Defensive specialist. His job is Isaiah Thomas. Thomas has six already. What's this? Charge is calling Albert King. Isaiah Thomas jumps in front. Good anticipation by Isaiah there. He got the switch. The chance to look at it right here. You see Indiana overplaying. Isaiah drops right out there as, as Albert King comes out. Good anticipation. Ten minutes and 28 seconds left to play in the first half. Kitchell outside looking down low. Maryland hardening off the floor. That zone defense. 3-2 zone. Here's Whitman. Gets it over to Isaiah Thomas. He will go to the basket. And Isaiah Thomas, just an extraordinary basketball player. Eight points. Great penetration, and he makes a tough shot right there.
Maryland was a good shooting team in the regular season, as was Indiana. Maryland hitting 52% as the field as a team. Here's a foul call now going against Kitchell of Indiana. Indiana foul. In the first game, the most valuable player award is going to St. Joseph's University, and that's the man we selected to get it. He wasn't a player, but he was the coach that devised the zone defense, the motivation, everything that went into one of the great upsets in NCAA basketball history. <laughs> St. Joseph, <laughs> he's happy. <laughs> he could have stuffed. He's only 5'7". Jim Lynham and a $1,000 Chevrolet scholarship goes to St. Joseph's University of Philadelphia to the General Scholarship Fund. And of course, there'll be an MVP of this game also. Randy Whitman is coming out really playing for Indiana. Finally gets his first two points in the game. Had a, played a great overall floor game, and the Hoosiers have an eight-point lead. Indiana with a great advantage, as you know, Gary. They win here today, and they go back to their own building, the Assembly Hall in Bloomington, where 17,400 will be yelling for them next weekend. Well, in the press conference, they kind of wanted to play that down, everybody, about going back to Bloomington, but that definitely has to be an advantage for Indiana. Ball tipped around, and Buck Williams gets it out to Ernest Graham. Physical play underneath, and Buck Williams out muscling Kitchell. Ray Tolbert is about two feet over the rim to take down that defensive board. Isaiah Thomas gets it to Whitman. Indiana's a textbook team, the way they move the ball around. Tolbert puts the shot up. The rebound comes down to Graham. Hey, these two teams are good. They've really got players. Coach Knight, relaxing for the moment as his team opens up an eight-point lead. Now gets the ball back on the turnover. Isaiah Thomas has already scored eight points for Indiana. Gets the ball in the corner to Kitchell. He's always looking to go down low if something's open. Maryland trying to cordon up the lane inside. Playing his own defense. Now Landon Turner gets the ball and shoots it from on high. Little pastry right there. He could have laid it right up off the glass, but he went backhanded stuff. 8.20 to play in the first half in Indiana with a dramatic turnabout in the game after trailing by eight points at the outset. Now leads by 10 and gets the ball back on a turnover. Maryland needs a timeout. Well, the defensive pressure right now has got Maryland out of their rhythm. But Indiana has the ball. They're ready to try to make it 12. That last stuff by Turner, I'll tell you, playing for Bobby Knight, he better make the stuff. <laughs> Kitchell rips the hoop and Maryland gets the ball back. Here comes Reggie Jackson down the middle of the floor, right flank to Ernest Graham of Maryland. Pull it up, cross court. Yep. Throw it away and talk about the action and Landon Turner. Watch here. He's talking about taking the alleys away inside, and all of a sudden Isaiah finds Landon Turner. Watch here. He can just lay it or cram it, but back up overhand stuff and two points the easy way. Indiana with 7.50 to go in the first half, leading 30-20. to 20. The Hoosiers in postseason play for the ninth time in the 10 seasons as Bobby Knight has been coached there. Indiana whipping that ball around. All five men always in the game at both ends of the floor. Everybody handles the ball and well. Isaiah Thomas takes a look out to Landon Turner, looking to attack the zone, and they get a man going back door. Goal 10 against Albert King, and Whitman gets the field goal. What they did that time, Indiana, was they double back on their motion offense. Instead of coming out and looking for the, the shot and coming back, Whitman just kept going and got the clear pass on the lane on the drive. 7-16 left to play. Albert King to the basket, pulls up in the shot, then going down the rebound as Kitchell looking to run. Out the side to Randy Whitman, saves the ball from going out. 7.01 left to play. First half. Don Cookie with Gary Thompson, Indiana, leading 32 to 20 after trailing at the outset 8 0. Ray Tolbert again. Rebound comes down to Albert King of Maryland. In the game for the Maryland Terrapins is freshman guard Steve Rivers. Here's, here's the action again. We'll see it right here. Come across. Albert King goes up, pins it against the glass. Ford comes down. Goals in the call. 32-20, Indiana. And Indiana has a 12-point lead. We'll be back in a moment. 
Hawkeye, University of Dayton Arena. We've seen one great game, and now we have Indiana and Maryland after the upset of DePaul by St. Joseph's of Philadelphia. Scoring so far for Indiana, they've gotten big point production from three guys. Isaiah Thomas with eight, Landon Turner has eight, Ray Tolbert has six. Albert King leads Maryland with eight points. Buck Williams has six. He got his early when Maryland jumped off to that big eight-nothing lead at the outset. In Indiana 16 to 25 for 64 percent, and Maryland 9 of 19 for 47 percent. The big difference, that's the 11th turnover for Maryland. Indiana's only committed two. Six minutes and five seconds to play in the first half. Indiana under control and yet ready to run if that opportunity avails itself. They are a very, very disciplined team with great athletes to execute any pattern of play. They can run, they can play the pattern game against the zone as Maryland's been using against them. Now the Terrapins get the ball up quickly and Greg Manning looks down low, trying to get it to Buck Williams. Kitchell is fronting him. A lot of shoving going on underneath. Kitchell and Buck Williams. Indiana, an excellent job getting back on defense. Buck Williams gets it up and gets the field goal as Tolbert is called on a goal stand. Eight points for Buck Williams. And we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WTHR, Channel 13, Indianapolis. With Gary Thompson, this is Don Crickey, Mid-East Regional, Dayton, Ohio. Indiana and Maryland, second game today. St. Joseph's of Philadelphia upset the ball in the opener, 49 to 48, on the final shot of the game. Now, as Landon Turner heads to the basket, there's a shooting foul called against Maryland. Maryland foul Albert King getting his second personal foul. Landon Turner that time, Don, a good good fake on uh, Rivers. He got him up in the air, and then, boy, showed some quickness, went right to the basket. Landon Turner is a junior from Indianapolis, 6'10", 240 pounds. They got some big people up front. Ray Tolbert, 6'9", 225. Kitchell, 6'8". Whitman in the backcourt is 6'6". Isaiah Thomas is 6'1", but he can get his elbow over the rim. It's a 34-22 game. Again, Indiana by 12. Albert oh. King to the basket. That has been called a walking highlight film. Ten points for Albert King. Real super move there by Albert. And the quickness that he went from the floor and laying out. Great body control. Landon Turner lost the handle but got his own rebound. And if at first you don't succeed, and Landon Turner gets it on the second drive. Landon Turner, as we mentioned, started early. MVP in the Indiana Classic, which was played with California and Baylor. So he started strong, had a mid-season slump, and now really has come on strong once again. The King with a jam finger. King shaking off the, the hand injury down there. Here's the action as we come back again. Landon Turner going up. We're right there. I think it was King got jammed on the ball. You can see right there. And Landon Turner gets it on the second try. Now back to live action. Maryland has the ball. In the game in the backcourt, Steve Rivers has been working for Maryland, a freshman from Uniondale, Long Island. Very quick player against Isaiah Thomas. Reggie Jackson was unable to stop Isaiah Thomas, who scored eight already. So now they have Rivers in against him. Charge against Ernest Graham, a big guy from Baltimore. It's the second foul. And I tell you, when you play Indiana, you're going to see a lot of charging fouls because they fill up the lane very well. You see Ernie Graham right here can't get the shot. Team defense right there as Whitman picks it up and gets the offensive charge. Player control foul. Four twenty to play in the first half. Pass goes over to Whitman, takes a look, and now goes down low to Landon Turner. Back to Isaiah Thomas to the basket. Not enough there, but look at it again. Indiana gets the offensive board, and Ray Colbert puts it back up and good. And the Hoosiers open up their biggest lead of the game. Basket no good on the field by Thomas. A foul's call on Isaiah. And why they're getting the offensive boards is the penetration by Isaiah. When he penetrates, forces the defensive man to come off and help. That releases the other man, Isaiah's teammate, to go to the board. See, the one thing Maryland has to do, they're making turnovers, it's a pressure defense, and they're going to have to get some cutaways or back doors. Maryland basket. 
10 points now for Buck Williams, who started to kick it up again, and the uh, Terrapins are down with by 12, 38 to 26. 3.45 left to play. First half. Isaiah Thomas up the baseline of the floor for the Hoosiers. He has 10, and Indiana again has a 14-point lead. Rivers, the freshman backcourt player for Maryland, against the sophomore Isaiah Thomas. Looking down low for Albert King, who gets the ball. They double up on him, but King still gets to the basket. Still puts up up. Doesn't get it to go, but follows it up. He's only great. Great second effort right there. And, of course, Bobby Knight's not going to be too happy giving that baseline away the last two times, and it's resulted in Maryland basket. That's 12 for King. Landon Turner turns it around. He now has 14 points. Landon Turner, who averages just nine points a game, has been scoring every other time down the floor for the Hoosiers. They again have a 14-point lead. Greg Manning finally connects now for Maryland with his first bucket of the game. First two points. Lefty Drizel up and off his feet, looking for those terms to get going. As they did at the outset, if you weren't with it at the outset, Maryland came out running up and down the floor, opened up an eight-point lead, an eight-nothing lead. Now Indiana's come back and has dominated the game. Look at Ray Tolbert there. He played the rebound, took it right away from Buck Williams. Buck not anticipating Tolbert coming in from behind. Albert King down low. Ball is taken away by Whitman. King trying to push him out of bounds. Here comes Isaiah Thomas down the middle off to the right flank. It's Tolbert. Isaiah Thomas pulls up and hits the shot off the run. 12 points for Isaiah Thomas, and it's a 46-30 game. Indiana with its biggest lead. I think Maryland right now, two minutes. I don't know what Lefty's thinking. He might have wanted to get a timeout. He looked at the clock, maybe with less than two minutes to play. He'll run it out and save the timeout for later. Reggie Jackson getting set to come back in for Maryland. Jim Thomas getting set to come in for the Hoosiers. Albert King pulls up, fires. Rebound, man, they're crashing inside. Buck Williams came through, knocks the people apart. Called that goaltending on Turner. It is yep. a pretty close call. There's moments before down on the other end. Turner went up with a jump, jump hook, does not get it. But watch Tolbert. Great hustle coming off the side, no foul. Gets his feet under him, and bam, crashes it down. So it's a 46-32 game. The Hoosiers by 14. They have the ball as Tolbert goes outside of Whitman. Here's Jim Thomas in the game. Giving Isaiah Thomas a rest. 117 left to play. Clock winding down in the first half. And Indiana in the lead, 46-32 in the second round game of the Mideast Regional. The Hoosiers with a victory head back to Bloomington for regional play next week. Don, you're getting a clinic in basketball of how to play without the basketball. That, to me, is the, one of the most important things in the game. It's great to be able to play one-on-one, -on -one, but it's tougher to learn to play without it, and they are doing an excellent job. Colbert. Charging in there. It's called for a foul. Goal coming to get him out. Ernest Graham is credited with the field goal. Watch again. There's the action coming right here as you see Graham go up. Now watch the ball come off. And whether that was on the rim was tough to tell. They called it offensive goal then. Down court it goes. Here comes Ray Tolbert feeding off. And Landon Turner slam dunks the ball. And it's 50 to 34 Indiana. 16 points for Landon Turner, who, as we mentioned earlier, averages just nine a game. Six nine Tolbert to six ten Turner. They went two on one. Here comes Indiana again. Look at Jim Thomas come down on the fly. He didn't see Randy Whitman, who was wide open on the left flank. Now they got a down low to Whitman, and a travel is called. Great team basketball by Indiana. You look at Bobby Knight. He's a little unhappy with the traveling call. He saw another two chalked up on the board for the Hoosiers. Now, one thing is Indiana might be rated seventh in the country, but you're not going to find any club that looks better than this. Well, they're on a roll. They have really been playing strong down the stretch. Very different. First half ends, and what a half it was for Indiana. 
as Maryland comes out of the gate with eight consecutive points and takes an eight-nothing lead, and then Indiana starts to roll. The Hoosiers with unquestionably their best half of basketball this season as they rally from an eight-nothing deficit and then really blew Maryland away the rest of the first half and take a 16-point halftime lead. We'll be back at the Mid-East Regional in Dayton right after this. With Gary Thompson, we know DePaul's not going to win the national championship yet this year. We don't know who's going to win, but if Indiana keeps playing like this, the Hoosier just might be there, leading 50 to 36 at halftime, or 50 to 34. That was championship play in the first half. I don't think I've witnessed a better half of basketball. As I said, it was a clinic, and a clinic on playing without the basketball. It wasn't one on one. It was great team play. All right. We'll be back with more of our halftime activities here at the University of Dayton after this message. The Bell System College Basketball Report is brought to you by Bell System Yellow Pages. If you want to save time and energy, take the first step. Let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. The great thing about the NCAA basketball championships, every game is a whole season. You lose and you're gone. DePaul, number one in the country, coming in knows that. Let's find out about the rest of this day's action as we switch to New York and Bryant Gumbel. All right, Don Cricky, thank you much. DePaul, indeed, the worst upset of this day, at least from DePaul's point of view. In the Mideast, St. Joe's, a winner over them, final 49-48. Mark McGuire had only eight points. In the Midwest Regional, the LSU Tigers won their 29th. That's the most victories in the country this year. They turned back Lamar 100-78. to They will get the winner of the Arkansas-Louisville game. And in the Eastern Regional, BYU beat UCLA, final there, 78-55. to Danny Ainge, 37 points in that ball game to lead all scores. And so the BYU Cougars move on, they will meet the winner of the other Eastern Regional Affair, matching James Madison against Notre Dame. Let's go to Providence, check in on that one with Dick and Billy and Al. Gentlemen? Joe Klein has just scored for Notre Dame on a follow shot at 22-14. Notre Dame leading James Madison with 2.45 left in the first half. Here's the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Notre Dame has led throughout. James Madison never in the lead. That's David DuPont for the Dukes. He scores, and he is fouled by Joe Klein. And as he as Joe Klein fouled, Digger, had, Digger just buried his head in his hands. Just when he thought his team might be getting a chance to blow this thing out a little bit, a three-point play opportunity. Watch this guy. This kid can shoot. He's an active ball player. He's a heady player. He's unselfish. He has to shoot more for James Madison to win today. DuPont from Page High School in Greensboro, North Carolina, led his team to the 4A state championship and was the most valuable player in the state tourney. Averaging just a bit over seven points a game. He likes to pass rather than shoot, although as you pointed out, Al, he's a better than a 51% shooter. I'm surprised he got out of North Carolina. He's from Greensboro. That's uh, kind of rare that one of the North Carolina teams wouldn't have picked him up. He's the first from Carolina to go to James Madison. Misses the free throw. Jackson with the rebound. 2.30 left in the first half. Notre Dame by six. It's been all Trapuca and Jackson for the Irish. Trapuca has eight. So does Tracy Jackson. So 16 of their 22. See, Notre Dame has to attack the zone, even though they're six points up. Inside, Andre back in the game. Klein is out. Trapuca, way short, misses everything. Ruland saves it. Here come the Dukes. I don't think Kelly realized how far from the basket he was that time. Towns with a drive and scores. Linton Towns makes it 22-18. So even as the Dukes give the Irish all they can handle, that ball game's at 22-18. Meanwhile, Midwest regional action in Austin, Texas. Arkansas Razorbacks and Louisville Cardinals are playing a game above the rim. Let's check in there with Marv Albert and Bucky Waters. Marv Albert and Bucky Waters from Austin, Texas. This is the second round of the Midwest regionals. And Arkansas showing much patience here in the first half with a four-point lead on Louisville. All right, off the steal, the Razorbacks of Arkansas get it back. Ten seconds to go on the half, it's a three-on-one. U.S. lead off the turn, they flex it away. Sensational recovery by Louisville, coming back to deflect what looked like a sure basket. Getting the ball over the 10-second line that time was an adventure for Louisville. 
Darrell Walker, who has scored 19 points to lead Arkansas, will throw it in three seconds remaining. Mike Young. And rebounded by Rodney McCray, and that's the end of the first half with Arkansas leading by four. So, Arkansas up by four right now against the defending NCAA champions, Louisville Cardinals, who come into this game as winners of 15 straight. Again, the winner of this ball game gets the dubious honor of taking on the LSU Tigers in that Midwest region. We've got more basketball to come as our coverage of the NCAA basketball championship continues right after this. Back at Dayton, it is the Indiana Hoosiers leading Maryland's Terrapins 50-34 to 34 at half. An unlikely score, even more so when you consider that at the outset of this game, Maryland scored four quick field goals and went out in front eight to nothing. Gary Thompson, what can they do to get back in this Maryland? Well, I think the big thing has been turnovers for Maryland. They've turned the ball over, it must be, I think, 12 or 13 times in the, in the first half. And one thing I can think against Indi or, uh, Indiana's pressure, they're overplaying a lot, which is nice type of defense. They're going to have to make some cutaways and go to the basket to relieve some of that pressure and make Indiana respect that. Indiana, you know, we talk about good basketball teams. This is good a college basketball team as I've ever seen play a half of basketball. I'm talking about the UCLA team. Indiana's been phenomenal. Well, they have been great. As I mentioned, they were behind eight to nothing. And normally a coach, when a run in a game like this, would take a timeout. But Bobby Knight knew that they were playing well. They had their shot and just didn't get them down. Okay, well, we're going to be back very shortly, Gary. It's the Indiana Hoosiers leading by 16 points at halftime. We'll be back after we pause for these messages from your local stations. As you know, for much of this season, Oregon State University was the number one ranked team in the country, and they're out in front of Kansas State right now by 16 points. We'll be coming back for the second half of Maryland and Indiana right after we pause for these words. Danny Ainge, Brigham Young University. All-America, team captain, one of the most prolific scorers in Cougar history. Danny Ainge also is a professional baseball player with the Toronto Blue Jays. Why go to college? Danny Ainge knows he can't play sports all his life. He looks to the future. My college degree will open a lot of doors for me if for some reason um, baseball fell through or I was injured and I wasn't able to play anymore. I could go in different areas of the communications field. Well, what makes me continue college, besides the fact that I just love to play basketball, especially at the college level, is the fact that it's forcing me to complete my college education. It's important to have a balance in my life that I will always not let athletics be the only thing in the, or even the most important thing in my life. Higher education. People preparing for tomorrow's challenge. The 1981 National Collegiate Basketball Championship is brought to you by Chevrolet and your Chevy dealers who want to help get America rolling right now. By Xerox, we're big in small copiers. By the U.S. Army, the Army, a great place to be all you can be. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And now we switch back to our studios for these messages. First half statistics, Indiana's been just sensational, hitting 24-37, 64% from the field, scoring 50 points in the first half. Maryland's played well from the field, but turnovers have been the difference, and there they are flashing 13 times the Terrapins have kicked it away. And those turnovers resulted in Indiana getting seven more shots in the field and hitting 64%. It almost counts for the difference. And a lot of those shots, the reason the shooting percentage is so good, although there's been some good outside shooting, is so many of the Indiana baskets have come inside with their big people shooting it from over the hoop, down. They certainly have, Ray Tolbert and Landon Turner. And we thought about the pace of this game and the tempo, but Indiana is showing that they can play at whatever tempo you want to play. They come out, they're opportunistic team on fast break situations. They handled it well. When they don't get the break, they set it up and really running their, their offense very well. Hoosier's gone with Ray Tolbert at center, Landon Turner. Up front, along with Ted Kitchell in the back line, Randy Whitman and 
The starting guard in the All-American, Isaiah Thomas, in to start the second half. Got some rest for Jim Thomas. Came in and is dead for a while in the late in the first half. Ernest Graham with a good play for Maryland. Gets his own offensive rebound and puts it back up. And the key there was Graham went away from the basket, saved maybe getting the shot blocked. Now the Hoosiers turn it over as Graham with 10 points gets Maryland back to within 14, and now Maryland gets a chance to get closer. No, Bobby Knight did not like that pass by Kitzel, but I really got to fault Tolbert there. Kitzel was leading him, but Tolbert kind of quit on him. He kept going. He could have had the pass and maybe an easy two. Maryland was seated only six in the Mid-East Regional. Beat Tennessee Chattanooga the other night, 81-69 in the first round. 14 points in the books now for Albert King of Maryland as the Terps are back to within 12. Maryland coming out, uh, zone trapping full court as they down by 12. Landon Turner off the baseline, and Indiana has his first point to the second half, and the Hoosiers lead by 14. Landon Turner's having a week's worth here. He's got 16 already. 16, and he's averaging 8.9, so he's doubled his, his average. Reject. Landon Turner rejected Albert King. Greg Manning from the outside, a great outside shooter, drills it for Maryland. And I think Manning is the young man that they need to get into the offense a little bit more. He's a great shooter, and Indiana's going to give you more of the perimeter shots than they will inside. At the half, Indiana opened up the big lead and now the Hoosiers seeing their lead cut somewhat. Watch Isaiah Thomas go inside. Feeds off to Tolbert. Maryland much more aggressive on defense. Maybe too much so there as Ernest Graham has called for a personal foul. Ernie doesn't like the call. He's third. Ted Kitchell gets a break. Rebound goes right to him. And there's Landon Turner, who likes to shoot at that high percentage shot. And that shouldn't have happened right there. When the ball is kicked out, America is just standing underneath, not reacting to the play. 30, 30. Kitchell aggressively moving at the ball is called for the foul. He's from Galveston, Indiana. Ted Kitchell getting his third personal foul. And you see the type of defense by Indiana. They're overplaying. There's a honey that likes Indiana. <laughs> I think she likes Maryland a little more. Terrapin. <laughs> Bobby Knight looks on. It's a 54-40 game, 18-04 left to play in the game as Ernest Graham gives the ball to Dutch Morley who's come in for Maryland. Morley bounce passing down low to Graham. They're doubling up on him. Back out to Morley looking for the shot. Quickly down low to Buck Williams. On the way down, it'll go as a goal 10 against Ray Tolbert. Seventeen fifty left to play in this game. Whitman goes down low. Kitchell gets a free one, makes it go. Ted Kitchell scores. He has eight points. Well, the difference in this ball game is the type of shots that Indiana is getting compared to Maryland. Mar Indiana's just getting excellent shots, wide open. Albert King turns and puts it up. Roll on going. Randy Whitman, a guard, but a big one of 6-6, six, six, gets the rebound. Here comes Isaiah Thomas down the floor for Indiana, pulling up with the shot. And Isaiah Thomas drills it. 14 points for Isaiah. 17-14 to play in the game. Welcome to Dayton, Ohio. This is Don Quickie with Gary Thompson. We're in the Mideast Regional after a sensational first game. David got Goliath centuries ago, and St. Joseph's got DePaul today. As St. DePaul was upset on a last-second shot, and now the Indiana Hoosiers in white with the ball are leading Maryland in the second game, 58-42. The Hoosiers with a first-round bye. Reigning Big Ten champions playing spectacular basketball as Isaiah Thomas leads inside the Kitchell, who misses but gets his own rebound and gets it down. Mike get a three-point play. I've never seen a college team play a better first half than Indiana did. I agree with that, Don. We mentioned the team basketball all the way, getting open shots, and they're out hustling Maryland. There again, Kitchell went up, did not get the, the layup after Isaiah made good penetration in the pass. He looked at a concerned Lefty Dizel. 16.50 to go in the game. Indiana was down in this game. 8 nothing at the outset. Now look where they are. So, 11 points are in the books now. 
Ted Kitchell, who's a 9.6 point a game score. And how come, here comes Indiana again. Landon Turner gets the rebound, goes off to Isaiah Thomas behind the back. And oh, oh, man. I mean, these guys are so good, it's unbelievable. Fantastic. You've seen two great middlemen today, and Isaiah Thomas and Bradshaw. Bradshaw made a couple of plays. Here they the come ball. again. Randy Whitman feeds off. Kitchell goes to the basket. They got him out of Traveler. Indiana would have had two more. I, tell you, I want to see the team that's going to beat Indiana. Unless they uh, turn up with a flat tire, they just might be in Philadelphia. Well, as I mentioned, they play like this. I'd say they're definitely going to be there because they're playing uh, control basketball. They're out on the break. Just excellent. Coach Knight has them ready, and the Hoosiers come out of Kraken. Three times Indiana national champions of college basketball. They could get a fourth this year. The last, of course, under Bobby Knight back in 1956. He needs to get some points for this Maryland team. Is right at the moment they are down 63 to 42 to Indiana, who've really been something the Hoosiers. Indiana was last beaten back on. February 19th when they lost at Iowa. Since then they've had five straight Big Ten victories. Back at Dayton, Buck Williams of Maryland can't get the shot to go and here comes Indiana again as Ray Tobert heads to the basket and draws a shooting foul. Indiana has come out hitting like one of the greatest teams you've ever seen assembled. Indiana with a 63 to 42 lead after Maryland in the yellow uniforms went in front of the outset 8 0. This is Don Quickie with Gary Thompson, and here come the Hoosiers again, Gary. Getting out on the fast break, long lead pass to Tolbert. Dutch Morley in the lineup, I think, because of a little more offense than Jackson gets the foul. Tolbert on the line, shooting a pair. Ray Tolbert, the big Indiana center. Powerful center has been hammering the board. Problem with Maryland in the first half was turnovers. Terrapin turned it over 13 times to just three turnovers for Indiana. As Indiana built up a 16 point halftime lead, 50 to 34. Albert King, the All American for Maryland, gives the ball up to Dutch Morley. A couple of sharp shooters on the outside. Morley, here's a steal by Landon. Turn it, but Morley gets it back. Goes down to Albert King. Watch this. But King can't get it to go with all those moves inside. He got the shot. Isaiah Thomas, here's an overmatch now. Indiana on the run, three on two. Off to the right flank as Kitcher. Whitman pulls up and hits it. Oh, he didn't get it to go. Rebound comes down to Pittman of Maryland. And now they open up the track meet again. Lead pass goes down court. Going hard to the basket, but able to get the shot is Greg Manning. 15-22 to play in the game. Indiana. Ripping this one wide open and hoping to head home and in all probability heading home to Bloomington for the many regional play next week. And NBC will be there. Landon Turner goes down to Kitchell. Ball was tipped from behind. Kitchell got his own rebound and Ted Kitchell, who tries harder, will go to the free throw line. Albert King. 65-42 Indiana, and Ted Kitchell goes to the free throw line. Now, Terrapin slowed up a bit. That's what's underneath that turtle's head. <laughs> well, this is just plain hustle by Indiana. You see the second and third efforts of that young man with his bent over. Ted gets 11 points. Uh, if he doesn't get the shot, he gets the block from behind there. He stays right with it, gets it back up, chance for a three-point opportunity. Or rather, two free throws. Excuse me, Becca didn't go. Last year, you remember, Maryland fans will. They went to the NCAA championships, as did Indiana. Maryland beat Tennessee at Greensboro, then lost in the regional, Eastern Regional, to Georgetown, 74-68. Indiana last year went out in the Mid-East Regional to an eventual Final Four team. Here is Morley on the outside, putting up his shot. Rebound tipped around, knocked around, and knocked out of bounds. You mentioned the importance of a championship coming in and have your team coming in there high at that time. And Indiana has really got the momentum coming in, finishing with five straight wins and it's peaked just at the right time. 
Rebound fought for. Lots of people going for the ball. Ernest Graham dies to the floor. Throws it back in, but it goes to Isaiah Thomas. Here comes in the end of the run. Looks like his landed Turner. Isaiah Thomas pulls up and takes the shot and makes it work. See the great job he did there. Two on two. He makes the, the last step like he's going to penetrate, and then boom, pulls it up, gets the defensive man off him, gets a wide open shot. Greg Manning can't get the shot. Here's an interception and stolen ball by Ernest Graham. Who moves back in. Pittman puts it back up, and Maryland finally gets the hoop, but it might be too little too late as the Hoosiers are out in front, 69 to 44. The building is sold out at the University of Dayton Arena, and they saw a shocker in the opening game. One of the all-time upsets of NCAA tournament play. St. Joseph's of Philadelphia beating the nation's number one ranked team, the DePaul Blue Demons, 49 to 48. It's to be like Rock City in the city of Chicago. DePaul was leading by a point, seven seconds to play, and had a 85% free throw shooter at the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Skip Diller missed the first one, and down came the ball to. Here comes the ball now down court. It's intercepted by Ray Colbert. Back to Isaiah Thomas, floating in. Look at these guys play. He has the ability to find the man when he penetrates. If he doesn't get the shot, he finds the open man for the easy two. All of a sudden, Colbert has scored 20 points. It's 71 to 44. We're going to keep on tuning into this game as, at this moment. Indiana's opened up a 71-46 lead. But let's find out about the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and how they're doing with another upset-minded team, James Madison, as we switch to Denberg in Providence, Rhode Island. Dick? Providence Civic Center, Dick Enberg, Al McGuire, Billy Packer. Just early into the second half, a minute plus gone. Notre Dame has scored the only points of the second half after leading 23-20 at the intermission. Have built a five-point lead. This is DuPont of James Madison University Duke to the ball. Towns are leading score and a foul on Andre over the shoulder of Ruland. You watch in the second half here. I thought Dick was absolutely right in the first half trying to create play. Now that they can shake James Madison, they got to go now play off the shoulder. Keep it simple. Try to get your strength down and low, punch the ball in there. But don't try to blow him out anymore. Gil Salinas comes in. Andre goes out. Salinas, who has seen very little action all season long, hampered by torn ligaments in that right knee, hurt himself against the University of San Francisco. So he just played a little spot duty and now into a very important game as the Irish in a contest. They're up by only five. Well, they had 83 minutes of playing time all season, Dick. I think off the mark, but DuPont inside to get the rebound. Porter, and he's fouled. Salinas got him. Maybe the reason for Salinas moving in, plus he's a senior, is that he's 6 foot 11, but he has an adequate outside shot. Here we're going to see it. DuPont had excellent position. Everybody kind of relaxed. Salinas came down just at the wrong time. See, he get that hesitation in, get the shoulder head fake. 76% shooter from the strike. He pulls the team within two, 25-23. Notre Dame, just two minutes into the second half. Dick, we pointed out how the crowd has already heard the score of St. Joe's big win. It's starting to become a home crowd for James Madison. Paxton to Salinas. The Irish just did escape the trap. Paxton open and nails it. 27-23. Paxton's first point of the game. It could have come at a better time. Back up to four points, 27, 23. Notre Dame playing that one, two, two zone. And watch the future take that first cutter. Match up zone. They really play it well. Jackson with 10, the future with eight points to lead the Irish. Madison was very balanced scoring. All starters with four points or more between a four and six point range. See the difference this half? They're not super aggressive, Notre Dame. They just want to now get in under the wire. They want to win the game. Towns inside the ruling, and Salinas picks up a foul, no basket. 
non-shooting foul. You know, Dick, I'd like to pick up on what Al said and throw it back to him. He said they just want to win the game, and people sitting home say, well, didn't they want to do that the first half? And I want to amplify that. Well, the first half, what Notre Dame was trying to do, which was a smart thing to do, is to blow them out of there, create play. Even with an eight-point lead in the first half, Notre Dame attacked James Madison's zone. With an eight-point lead, you don't exa attack the zone. You settle back and eat up the clock. But wow. now, now they can't do that anymore. Now they have to just play off the shoulder their game, grind the game out. Don't play for 27-23 for Puka with a spinning move for the 10-footer. Rebound by DuPont. The guard has come up with a couple of big boards in the second half. Oh, nice first move. Pounds out to Fisher. Not there. Rebound again, Jackson. Not only wasn't it there, the shot wasn't there either. Right. Jackson now leads all rebounders to has five in the game. Sitting back in the 2-3 zone. I wouldn't be surprised if Notre Dame wouldn't pull up soon. Take it back out. Make him play man-to-man. -man. Jackson. Rebound. Two oh, the again. Oh, and stolen by Jackson. Lob. Oh. That was a pass. That was not a shot. I agree with you, Billy. I think so, too, it, the way it, you put it up there. Well, I think now that goes back on that particular play. Woolridge being a senior in Jackson, they played with each other all these years. He just assumed Woolridge was going to go get that one up at the basket. He's laughing. Al's asking him if he's a shot. He's just laughing. He doesn't want to deny it. Pusher is running away from the Terrapin, 73-48. For those of you who have been watching that game, we'll keep in close contact and give you updated reports. This one, close to activity. NBC will try to bring you the best game from all the regions. The going to be a Blackman. James Madison for charging. Blackman is the tallest power forward in the country. Third foul on him. Uh, Salinas did a good thing there. He just held his ground. And James Madison started with a cold hand to begin the game. He had only six points after eight minutes of play. Actually, after nine minutes. And they started the same way here in the second half after four minutes. Had just a three-point play from DuPont. And they changed up by coming out in the 1-3-1 trap. Jackson off to Salinas. Woolridge. Oh, oh, oh. He hurt himself again. I really think he needs to be out of there. Got pushed. Foul, I believe, on Blackman. will check it. Woolridge playing with that painful thigh injury. Did not practice all week long. They're going to have to give him a blow. Yeah, they got to get him out of there. Foul, shot to number 40, Ian Ruin. 50 seconds. Well, he's a bloody guy, this uh, Orlando. We understand we have an important news bulletin, and for that report, let's go to New York and Brian Jumbo. And for this bulletin from NBC News, three Pakistani terrorists holding 102 hostages just surrendered to Syrian authorities. The hostages, including three Americans, were released unharmed following a 13-day-long ordeal. The surrender came moments after a jetliner carrying 54 political prisoners from Pakistan landed in Damascus after being refused asylum in Libya. I advise you to stay tuned for more details on NBC Nightly News over most of these stations. Now for more college basketball action, let's return to the Providence Civic Center in Dickenburg. And while we were away, Orlando Woolridge hit two free throws. Notre Dame has matched its biggest lead of the game, eight points. We played four minutes plus of the second half. Back in the zone, James Madison has to attack now. Pounds a little farther out than he likes to be, but drills it anyway. 31-25, six points for him. James Madison goes to their man to man. Madison lost to University of Virginia and Ralph Sampson by only one 53 52 earlier in the year. Foul called on Towns of James Madison. They lost by only one point to Virginia Commonwealth twice. In fact, six of their eight defeats were by two or one point. They lost to Texas a and by four, and St. John's in the opener of the year by nine, the only real loss that they've covered all year in terms of a, and that's hardly a pace. Talk about pacing, it's the turkey capital of the world, Harrisonburg. There's a foul on the inside on Woolridge, coming across, trying to get the ball, reach for position. That's the home of James Manson. One guy that usually plays a little center for Virginia, Ralph Dick Sampson. We'll see Ralph Sampson tomorrow as we do the doubleheader from Charlotte to three of us. Villanova challenging Virginia and Virginia Commonwealth. 
Matched up against Tennessee. Ruland with that jump hook not there, and Jackson has another rebound for Notre Dame. 31-25, the Irish lead it. Salinas. They leave him alone. And Salinas touched it last. Digger Phelps off the bench to yell at Salinas, no, don't take that shot. Timeout. Five minutes and ten seconds gone in the second half. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame with a six-point lead, 31-25. Thirty-one twenty-five. Notre Dame leads here early in the second half. For those of you who have been watching the game at Dayton, Ohio, in that region, let's switch back to the Indiana-Maryland contest. This is Don Quickie with Gary Thompson back at the University of Dayton Arena, and the Indiana Hoosiers have kept it going. Now you see they're up by 27 points over Maryland with 7.25 left to play in the ball game. Indiana, just a superb team game. Everybody's been scoring. Kitchell has 13. Turner has 18. Colbert has 20. Whitman has 10. Isaiah Thomas has 16. At the free throw line right now is Steve Risley, who has three. Indiana cutting in as the number two seed in the Mideast Regional behind DePaul. I'm sure Knight pointed out, Gary, what happened to DePaul better not happen to us, boys. Well, when it first started out, Maryland ran eight to nothing, and sometimes you can start too fast. I think it's going to be easy, and Indiana holding their poise really has come back and strong, played the greatest game I've seen in a long time. Indiana's a basketball masterpiece, a disciplined team. Look at Isaiah Thomas put the ball over to Tobit. There's a whistle and a foul call against Maryland. An absolute masterpiece of basketball, every dimension of the game, offense and defense, the team game. Their court awareness, and they're also fully aware, so, so disciplined, moving away from the ball. This is a typical example right there. You think he's got to put the shot up, but now he knows that the man's coming in the other lane, and I mentioned early in the first half, Tolbert did a great job of hustling and filling. There he does again. Look at this game, and you see the, the execution, the, the perfection almost of these kids, and that's what it takes: is running your pattern and doing things as they're drawing out, and, and they're almost flawless today. They have been at just about flawless. 22 points for Colbert. Greg Manning can't get it to go. Looks to the official for a foul. No call comes. It was 6:42 to play. Whitman brings the ball up court for Indiana. The player we were mentioning earlier that turned the ball over 33 times in 30 games this year. It's pretty remarkable. Very controlled, consistent player. And with him in the back line, of course, they have this man with the ball, Isaiah Thomas, one of the great backcourt players in recent years. A consensus All-American first team as a sophomore. Indiana still attacking. They run the clock a little bit, but as soon as there's an opening, they go right to the basket looking for more. They're out in front, 82 to 52. You know, school's out, and you can tell it in the Maryland uh, players. They're just kind of playing out the string right now. Terrapins on Thursday night were challenged in the first half, had a rough time of it with a very good Tennessee Chattanooga team. Then Maryland's skill levels prevailed in the second half, and they moved out to an 11-point, 12-point win. 81-69, but this game, after leading early in the game, they've been literally blown away by Indiana. Randy Whitman goes out, and Jim Thomas goes in for the Hoosiers. Thomas for Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Only, the only player that Knight has not recruited out of the Indiana, Ohio, Illinois area. So that tells you something. There's got to be some pretty good kids in those three states. we got here. I think we got a foul inside. Bobby Knight, you look at him there coming up to question the call. Maryland not in the one and one. There's only the third team foul on Indiana. Maryland will play it out of bounds. And NBC's continuing effort to bring you all the action around the NCAA. Very shortly, we'll be getting an update from the Midwest Regional down at the University of Texas at Austin. Where last year's defending national champion Louisville is in action today against Arkansas. Louisville with a 15-game win streak after starting the season with two wins in his first nine games. Oh, man. A knock 
knockout punch put on Morley inadvertently. <laughs> Landon Turner who outweighs him by about 80 pounds. And Landon Turner has his 20 points now. That Morley really took a shot as Turner started up and Morley just hit the deck. Hit it hard. Looking for the guy that got him with the ball bat when he got up. Dutch Morley, a junior from Hyattsville, Maryland. From one of the same basketball high schools in America, the Napa High School. Albert King turns around, but Maryland has been long gone in this game. Trailing 86 to 54 with 5.17 to go. And that's typical of shots. Indiana has just got the much better shot all game long. And Maryland, while they've hit well, have had to hit the tough shot. Who's just gone for triple digits here, Gary? Maryland foul, number 21. Take a look at that Morley there. <laughs> you see the action here again. We'll comment. Atlanta Turner going inside to Isaiah Thomas. Here comes Morley. Isaiah watching him through. Comes up, gets the foul. Morley says probably to himself, there's no justice. I barely touched him. Pick up the foul. I got knocked down. Did not get a thing. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas came into this game as... One of the leading scorers in the backcourt in the Big Ten, 15.7 points a game. Today, Isaiah Thomas has scored 17. Arkansas is against Louisiana State, and right now Arkansas is in the lead, 52 to 50. Arkansas leading LSU, a team that many feel have a chance to go the distance. And let's go now to Texas at Austin and check out that game. Marv Albert, Bucky Waters from Austin, Texas. Arkansas leading Louisville 54 to 52 at halftime. It was Arkansas by four. They opened up an eight point lead in the opening moments of the second half. Louisville coming right back. And Arkansas in possession as we resume following the timeout. Arkansas in the red of the dark uniform. Louisville in the white. The high point man, Darrell Walker of Arkansas. He has 23. This is Mike Young. Greg Schulman. Young looking for Walker. He's got him down low, but he lost the double. And the ball will go to Louisville. Actually, Arkansas's play has been extraordinary. Hastings, who is their key, has sat on the bench most of the game in foul trouble. Walker appeared to have an easy pass to the bucket, something he's been doing all day and jamming it. He took his eye off of it that time. Turnover. This is Roger Berkman who just checked back in. In the backcourt with Greg Houston. Eric Smith. U.S. Reed again going high. So Arkansas with a 54-52 lead. Oh, a club that began the season at 2-7. and seven. The born-again Cardinals turned it around and now 21-8. They've won 15 in a row. It's currently the longest win streak in the nation. And they've won 19 of the last 20. The NCAA tournament has not been kind to defending champions. In the last four years, there have been 16 different teams in the final four. And three times, uh, Kentucky, Indiana, Michigan State, the year after they won the NCAA championship, they didn't even get back in the tournament. That's balance. Here's Young. He's open. Yes. And Arkansas leads by a four. 56-52. Mike Young has come off the bench to hit for 10 points. Benny Crump getting set to put Jerry Eves back in. Scooter McCray has it knocked away by Schulman. And the offensive foul on Derek Smith. Number 43, Derek Smith picking up his third. A key right now for Louisville and Denny Crump. He's got to keep his cool. Eight minutes and 45 seconds in a four-point game. His bench is deeper. He's got more people, and his style of game is, is destined to pay off with five minutes to go. I still get a feeling Louisville is going to come back. And again, the foul called by Louisville. As Darrell Walker tried to go baseline, he was cut off by Charles Jones, the freshman center. And now they say, no, Derek Smith picks it up. That's his fourth. So four apiece on Smith. 
and Rodney McCray. And Arkansas coach Eddie Sutton is inserting Scott Hastings. So Hastings back despite the full personal foul. Well, the big guys, if they're going to help you, it's in the normal flow of the game. With three to four minutes to go, the game belongs to the little people, the quickness. You're either trying to protect it or you're chasing it. So a 6'10 center is really of little value. I think it's a good move to put him back in here right now. Hopefully with Hastings giving uh, offense uh, from any uh, Sutton standpoint, maybe he can get that pad up to seven or eight before that fifth foul comes. There's a discussion on that last foul. We called it as uh, Charles Jones. Jones apparently now has been given the foul, so they take it away from Derek Smith. And Denny Crum has to be satisfied. Now Smith with three personal fouls. And Jones has two. A much better arrangement for the Cardinals. Arkansas by four. Louisville in possession. This is Eves. Even with Hastings back in there, they're going the 2-3 zone. Trying to protect Hastings. It's not Arkansas's best defense, but they played it pretty well. This is Berkman. Berkman has not seen much action today for Louisville. And Louisville had a difficulty locating a good shot. Now McCray got the roll. Scooter McCray has five points. And Arkansas leads by two, 56 to 54. Again, Arkansas taking the ball out under the basket against Louisville's press, and it's going to cost them. You've got to get out on that baseline and give yourself some room to go long. There's some other out. Seven and a half left, second half. Earlier today here in Austin, LSU knocked off Lamar. The winner here between Louisville and Arkansas will face LSU next week at the Superdome in New Orleans. And we're back at the University of Dayton with Gary Thompson. This is Don Quickie, where Indiana continues its onslaught against Maryland. Indiana now leading 94-64 as Greg Manning of the Terrapin scores in a driving shot. But only 55 seconds remain to be played. We'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of this game also. And we'll be switching to the other regional sites where action continues. Notre Dame and James Madison at Providence. You'll see the conclusion of that game. As right now, Indiana is concluding its most impressive win of this season. You have to marvel at the fact there was teams out there that could beat Indiana. Nine losses. I don't know what, how they happened. The most valuable player of this game, as selected by our NBC crew, is going to be Isaiah Thomas. Ray Tolbert played a great game, but it was Isaiah Thomas when Indiana was down 8 nothing at the outset who got them moving, scored the points, got the whole offensive juggernaut in gear, and so this sophomore All-American from Chicago gets the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award. There's Isaiah Thomas. There's Isaiah Thomas, still enjoying the, the game and, as the subs are in there scoring. And I, he had 19 points, and I don't know how many assists that he had in this ball game. He just dominated the game. Reggie Jackson has done very little for Maryland today. He has not scored in the game. Has to be a satisfied coach in Bobby Knight and his staff if you're looking right there because this is a, a tough club to go against in Maryland and they've just played great. And there he is, the Chevrolet MVP award winner, Isaiah Thomas. Albert King puts the ball in play. Manning puts it back inside. And the game clock winds up at Indiana with an absolutely sensational win. The Indiana Hoosiers under coach Bobby Knight extend their record to 22 and 9 and have to be categorized now as a potential national champion of college basketball back in a moment. Winner here, opening up a 16 point lead at the half, extending the final margin of victory to 35 points, routing Maryland 99 to 64. So Indiana now has another big advantage in that they go back to Assembly Hall, Bloomington, Indiana, their home arena for the Mid-East Regional Finals next week. 
It's going to be something, and Indiana was a great, great team today, as was St. Joseph of Philadelphia. An upset victory over the number one team in the country, the Blue Demons of DePaul. 49 to 48 in the first game. St. Joe of Philadelphia, an upset winner in the first and second round. First over Creighton in a very close game, a two point win, and then the one point victory over top ranked DePaul. We're going to get an update on all this action of this day in the NCAA tournament basketball. Right now, we're going to switch back to New York, where Brian Gumbel is standing by to update us on all the action. So, back to New York, to Brian. All right, Don Cricky, thank you much. So, Indiana, an easy winner over Maryland Day. Final there, 99-64. The Hoosiers now move ahead to face St. Joseph's. Even as you've been enjoying that ball game, we've been keeping our eye on a couple of others going on around this country. Perhaps the best of those are going on in Austin, Texas. There, the Midwest regional game is being played. The Louisville Cardinals and the Arkansas Razorbacks are playing the game above the rim. That one's been one and two points throughout the afternoon. So, let's switch now to Austin and check in live with our announcers there at courtside, Marv Albert and Bucky Water. Gentlemen, 